it was a marvel of American engineering, the end result of millions of dollars and years of work. And now, I finally get to drive it. Okay, so I'm exaggerating. Mechanically, this 1954 Kaiser Special is somewhat unremarkable, but it holds a special place in my heart as I've wanted to drive one of these cars since I was 14. While everybody else was reading edgy young adult fiction, I was engrossed in Richard M. Langworth's The Last Onslaught on Detroit, which may have explained my lack of popularity in high school. This book tells the fascinating story of the rise and fall of the Kaiser Fraser Corporation. Henry J. Kaiser was the classic American entrepreneur with an unyielding faith in hard work and big ideas. He built roads, dams, and when World War II broke out, battleships. He earned a reputation for getting huge jobs done in record time. Such was his popularity, they even made a comic book about him. However, Kaiser yearned to enter the car business. He had radical ideas about front-wheel drive, fiberglass body panels, and other innovations that no traditional automaker would try. With the war winding down, Kaiser partnered with seasoned auto executive Joseph W. Fraser. It seemed like a perfect match. Kaiser knew how to build things, and Fraser knew how the car industry worked. Most of Kaiser's ideas were too complex or too expensive to make it into the final designs. Still, initial sales of their steel-bodied, rear-wheel drive cars were good. But the partnership didn't last. After the immediate post-war demand for new cars had subsided, Fraser wanted to reduce production and cut costs. Kaiser, bent on expansion, refused, and Fraser stepped down in protest in 1949. Sure enough, Kaiser built way more cars than he could sell that year. Overproduction and out-of-control costs became recurring problems, and a merger with Willys Overland in 1953 didn't help. But the company still managed to create a new Kaiser design for 1954, and looking at the photos, my ninth grade self thought it was beautiful. In person, I still think the design is drop-dead gorgeous. The low belt line, widow's peak windshield, bold taillights, and sharp concave grille give it a look unlike any car made that year. Which is ironic, considering that Henry's son, Edgar Kaiser, basically told stylists to imitate the front-end design of the Buick XP300 concept car. But in my opinion, when you compare it to a 54 Buick, the Kaiser looks better. Most of its body panels actually hadn't changed from the previous year, but designers cleverly disguised this with the aforementioned grille and new taillights. In fact, there were so many leftover 1953 bodies that the factory just replaced those sections and turned the cars into 54s. This Kaiser is one of about 3,500 early specials built that way. The new Safety Glow rear fender lights provided a cheap way to mimic tail fins since the company couldn't afford to redesign the sheet metal. With only a 6-volt electrical system, they're not the brightest, but I think it's one of the greatest taillight designs of all time. Attached to that 6-volt battery is a 226 cubic inch inline 6. Kaiser never offered a V8, and by 1954, the supersonic 6's 118 horsepower couldn't match the beefier engines offered by bigger car companies. To combat this, the more expensive Kaiser Manhattan had an innovative solution. It came with a supercharged version of this engine, making 140 horsepower. Out on the road, I definitely found myself wishing for the extra boost. This is not a fast car. Even with it floored, you just don't get a whole lot of acceleration. I would describe it as gradual at best. 
But the nice thing is once you do reach cruising speed, the six cylinder engine is very quiet and it makes for a very relaxing drive. Unlike today's cars, which play fake engine noises through your radio speakers, this was a period where quiet exhaust was a sign of class. With a four-speed hydromatic bought from General Motors, driving feels pretty simple. As I said before, this car is mechanically unremarkable. Without the optional power steering, it does take some muscle for parking lot maneuvers, but the Special's ride remains quiet and stable. One thing I noticed driving this car, you can definitely feel its weight. I'm about to drive onto a brick road, and yeah, you can hear the noise, and you can definitely feel the vibration through the wheel, but you're not feeling any of that shakiness through the seat. This car is so heavy, and the seat is so thick, it's a very comfortable vehicle, even when you're driving on an uneven road surface like this. In general, Kaiser interiors were great places to spend your time. Perhaps to substitute for the lack of power, it feels like they put in extra effort here, including safety innovations like a padded dashboard, easy to reach controls, and a lot of glass for increased visibility. A wider variety of color-coordinated fabrics and vinyls also set these cars apart from their competition. This special simulated bamboo looks really neat and supposedly makes cleaning a breeze. But even with its gorgeous looks and fancy interior, Kaiser sales were disappointing. Joe Fraser's ominous predictions had sadly come true. And so, in 1955, Kaiser Willys packed up all their car production and shipped it to South America, where demand was high and competition was low. The company did stay in the U.S. market with another product, but that's a different story. Success in the auto industry takes more than boundless ambition. It takes patience and nuance, things Henry J. Kaiser may have lacked. Reflecting on their defeat, Edgar Kaiser lamented, you win all your life, and that's one thing. Then suddenly you lose, and that's quite another. But if the failure to penetrate one of the most competitive industries of all time is your biggest loss on a record of winning, that's pretty good. As for the cars, my teenage dream finally came true. With less than 8,000 of these cars built and way fewer of them remaining today, I consider myself very lucky to have the chance to drive one. And I know these are never gonna be super collectible cars. They're never gonna be super famous. And I worry about that history being lost to time. And so that's why I love doing these videos because I know that people out there who are interested in these cars can learn more about them and hopefully enjoy them as well. And the story of Henry Kaiser is about more than just wins and losses. It includes massive contributions to America and the world. And this car is a part of that. Humanity will always face giant challenges. And in the future, whether it's space exploration or climate change or any other seemingly impossible task, there will always be people who rise to the occasion, whose boundless ambition makes the impossible possible. People like Henry J. Kaiser, who embody that unyielding faith in hard work and big ideas. Kaiser Fraser's history includes more than just this car. They also built convertibles, hatchbacks, compact cars, and even the first American fiberglass-bodied sports car, before the Corvette. The last onslaught on Detroit covers all these in great detail, and although it's no longer in print, you can still find it at public libraries. And if you want to know more about our thoughts on the Kaiser Special, you can check out these videos here. Thanks for watching.